Hello there. It's me again. That's right here in the middle of the video and the start of the second part of this, I guess, two part video, sort of. Um, I am doing these in separate videos for those of you who maybe only care about the sewing. This is the video for you. But if you did miss the pattern drafting process for this dress and you want to see that, I'll put that in a card here. Although hopefully I'll be able to put these two videos into a playlist so they will just play one after the other. This is the first time I'm doing it this way, so we'll have to see. But welcome back. Once again, still in the sewing room here. Um, I'm going to be going ahead and moving on from the pattern drafting into the cutting and sewing portion of making this Luke Skywalker inspired dress. So let's jump right in. All right, here I am back putting my pattern pieces on the cotton sateen again. This again is black cotton stretch sateen from Joann's. Um, I quite like this fabric. I've used it many a time, including already here on the channel once before in my black cotton sateen dress that I made here on the channel recently. But I'm just cutting out all the pieces for this dress here. Again, this uh, stretch in this fabric I have going across the body, of course, so that it helps it feel even more comfortable. Um, no use having the stretch go lengthwise now, is there? Um, but I am just cutting out two of everything, of course. The only pieces I'm going to be cutting out additional um, pieces for are the collar here, the mandarin collar down here on the bottom that you can see that's put here on the bias right now, the one I'm cutting out just right now. Um, and I'm going to cut out another set of those right now. Of course, I have a left and right, but I want a left and right and then a left and right again. And again, cut on the bias just so even though there's stretch in this fabric, there's a little bit more movement up there around the neck because when something's this close to your neck, you want it to be, you know, quite soft and not too rigid cutting out the skirt here as well. Um, but the other piece that I'll be cutting out multiples of is going to be the center front of the princess bodice. Don't know why I can't talk right now. And um, so I'm going to be cutting out two in black and one in white in the end of that piece. So you'll see me get to that in a minute here. So just going to cut out one more on the fold of that center front piece here. So I will have two black and then I will cut out one in white. Um, and that is because one of these panels gets sewn in with the princess bodice. And then the one more black one and the white one become the little extra panel that gets sewn on top of the bodice that the corner folds back to provide us with that little white collar. Of course, now that I have everything cut out, I'm going to go ahead and serge my raw edges, basically just anything that is going to receive any friction on the inside. So I don't bother like surging the raw edges of let's say the collar, um, but anything like the sleeve side seams, the side seams, the waist seams, um, the lengths along the back where the zipper will be, all that just gets a surged edge like this. So it won't ever fray. I should also say that you should pre wash your fabric, of course, as well. I'm just going to lay the back pattern piece on these cut and surge pieces now so I can mark the darts on here. I do just have the back darts, um, like the dart points and dart legs marked with an awl poked through the paper basically. And then I mark that with a colored pencil and then trace the dart legs in with Taylor's chalk here, just like so. Then I kind of just pinch my darts up like this. And I usually use about three pins, one at the point, one to hold the bottom together. I'm just turning to make sure that went through the right spot, finessing that a little bit. And then same with one in the center as well, making sure that I have everything lined up where it needs to be. And I'll go ahead and pin all my darts like that before I get started. I, again, I do sew in sort of batches. So I will pin a bunch of stuff, sew it all, go to the ironing table, pin another round of stuff, go back to the sewing table, things like that. So I kind of sew in a batch system here. So I'm pinning all my darts and then I'm going to go ahead while I'm marking things and mark the notches I'll need on all my princess seam pieces here. So I'm going to grab the pattern and then mark those little notches with, you can see they're already marked here because my camera didn't record this and I had to refilm it, but I'm marking those notches from the pattern drafting onto these side pieces here for the side of the princess seam. And then also the ones for the center of the princess bodice piece onto those as well. So I have, I only need to do it on one of these. Again, I cut out three of this piece. I only need these marks on one of them because only one of them is going to be sewn into the main body of the dress. This one in this instance. All right, so I can set that aside a little bit because I need to sew this yoke together before I can sew it onto that center front bodice piece. Um, so I'm just going to sew. Remember, I added a little bit of a seam allowance here in the center front of this yoke piece for the bodice front. So I just need to sew that shut right here, this little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll add that to my stack of things to sew this first round. And then I can sew it onto this guy after that. 
but I can go ahead and pin my collars together. So I have a left and right and a left and a right here. So these right sides together along the outside edge, leaving this um, last edge that will be sewn to the neckline open. Put those aside over there. And then I have the extras of this one, the white and black right sides together. So we'll have this little reversible black and white piece here that will become a sort of almost applique panel sort of situation that I will sew onto the top of this bodice um, using top stitching. But I'm just gonna go around the edge here, leave the bottom open so I can turn this right side out. So I'm just going to set that next to the machine as well. And I'll begin sewing with that same piece. So I'm just gonna leave the needle down, bring the presser foot up and move it where I need it to be and put the presser foot back down to sew. Um, that's just kind of the easy way to do these corners, nice and clean. So again, just leave the needle down into the fabric, press your foot up, move, press your foot back down, and keep sewing. So I'm just gonna do the whole edge of this guy just like that. Like so, and turn again. And that last little bit, there we go. Set that on my ironing table. All right, next up I have the front yoke piece here, just this little tiny seam. I do end up later unpicking a little bit of this because it turned out I needed a little bit more room, but that's all right, it helps us for now. Then I will sew around the edge of my collars. Just again, using that point that same way and then coming down the edge and then kind of walking my way around this very, um, like a slight, light, slight, slight curve of the collar in the front here. So I kind of just walk the needle around that to keep the curve exactly as I want it instead of going fast. And I do want to stop this stitching about a half inch before the edge here. Um, I forgot to do it on the beginning of this one, so I'll have to unpick that later again, once again. Um, but I remember on this spec second one that I want to stay about a half inch away from that bottom edge. So I can sew this onto the dress later, of course. And again, walking around this corner here, just so I don't accidentally go wild down here. All right, there's the second part of my mandarin collar here. And then it's time to sew a bunch of darts. Again, I start at the large end of the dart, sew along the indication line that I put there, and then sew off the edge. And then I will just go ahead and tie the threads together and then trim them. This is just how I learned to do darts, one of the methods I was taught, and I just have preferred it ever since, and that's just how I do them. So again, just repeat that process, you know, another 10 times or so here for all the darts for this project, starting at the wide end, sewing off the edge and then tying them shut. Oh, and our heater has just popped on down here. So sorry about that if you can hear it in the background, but it is quite cold here today. It's actually quite snowy. We didn't have a white Christmas, but we have a white after Christmas here. Okay, now that my darts are sewn, I just have my back pieces ironed here with the darts pointed towards the center back and I'm going to pin on my back yoke pieces here. So that style line I put in here across the back just for looks really and I'm just going to go ahead and sew these yokes on. I will do some top stitching along this seam as well in a minute. Set those next to the machine. Then I have my center front piece here that I just want to give a quick press to. There we go. And then I can take the yoke for the front that I just sewed the center of, like so. Iron that little center seam, and then I can pin the yoke onto the front bodice piece here. This is again a concave and a convex curve going together, so it will bunch up a tiny bit here on the top, but that's all right. It's not too bad because it's a very subtle curve here. I do just want to find the center of the bodice piece so I can make sure I line up that seam with the center on the bodice as well, so that everything is matched up nicely. Hold that seam allowance down there, and then just pin this all into place. I do use a lot of pins in my sewing, as people always are pointing out to me, and I do sew over my pins quite often. So, you know, that's just me. Uh, that's just how I sew, how it works best for me over the years. Here are my sleeves for this project. I did do elbow darts in these sleeves, or this pattern does include elbow darts, I should say. So I'm just going to give those a quick press, and then I will pin the underarm or like side seam of these sleeves together as well. All right, and the other, same sort of thing. There we go. All right, 
Then I have my skirt pieces here. This is a skirt back piece just here. Pressing my darts again towards the center on all these. Here's the skirt front. I'm just going to give this a quick cursory press as well here, just because I've got some serious crease marks from the fabric being folded and sitting here. And some lint, of course. All right, now I'll set that skirt back onto the skirt front right sides together and pin the side seams together so I can sew these together as well. The skirt on something like this goes together quite quickly, which is why I would say the pencil skirts are a relatively quick project for me. I can definitely do those in an afternoon if need be. Um, so on a dress like this, the bodice is definitely the more time intensive part of the situation. I'll just pin those side seams and set it next to the machine. There we go, back on the machine I am sewing that underarm seam of my sleeves now. There we are. I am trying to be good to remember to, and remember to take my pins out as I go, but listen, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. All right. And then that yoke onto the center front of the princess bodice. See? Not caring about pins now, am I? Oops. Oh well. It's fine. Nobody died, you know? Okay, and then the yokes for the back. All this is just with my normal half inch seam allowance, of course. I'm using about a two on my machine stitch length setting. Quite small stitch length for this. There we go. And ta-da. Oh, I forgot the skirt. Skirt side seams as well. Go ahead and do those. I should speed this up even more. People always say, will you do a real-time sewing video? And I'm like, my god, the sped up one is boring enough, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe it's interesting for some people to see me sew in real time, but you know, I, I wish it was faster. I wish I could speed up my real sewing. Here I am just ironing the side seams open of the skirt here in a lovely out of focus shot. Um, sadly, I did not focus properly here, but you know, you get the idea. I'm ironing open the seams using my tailor's ham a little bit here and just flat on the ironing board, opening up those seams in the skirt, and I will just set the skirt aside for now. Now I have my back pieces with that back yoke on there now. I'm just going to go ahead and press those seams as well, nice and good, because I am going to go ahead and do some top stitching along that seam on the outside. Same with the other side here. There we go. Sit next to the machine for that top stitching. And then for the top stitching on the center front piece of the bodice, um, before we sew it into the princess seams, I am gonna do a little top stitching on this one too. So I'm just pressing that open. All right, so the top stitching for this I'm gonna do a little bit differently. I'll just show you on this sketch here. So I'm gonna put top stitching where these red lines are. So instead of going straight across, um, cover, uh, going across that seam on the yoke, I'm gonna go up from there into the neckline area. So just a little bit of extra detailing for the top stitching on this one. And I've clipped that curve underneath so that this lays flat, of course. There we are. Do some top stitching on this guy, set it next to the machine. Then I have my sleeves that I'll just iron the seam on those as well. Like I've said before here on the channel, sewing is actually a lot of pressing, to be honest. But it makes your projects come out nicer, that's for sure. There we go. Back over on the machine, I'll start doing all that top stitching. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the edge of the presser foot as a guide and like lining the seam up with the edge of the presser foot and then moving my needle over so that it's quite close. It's probably about an, in an eighth of an inch away from the seam using the presser foot as a guide, and I'm just going along the seams. I have increased the size of my stitch length to maybe like three from the two it was at before, so a little bit larger stitch length for doing top stitching. Again, this is just black thread on black fabric, so it's not super noticeable unless you're up close, but I think it is a nice little extra layer of detailing. And again, I am just leaving my needle down in the fabric, turning everything, putting the presser foot back down. I need one more stitch here, um, and then sewing back a little bit. For whatever reason, I decided to tie this one off too. I I don't know why. I, I can't explain myself anymore, you know? I was tired when I was doing this too, so maybe I was just going a bit bonkers at this point. Alright, so there's the top stitching on the center front of this bodice here. One more line of stitching to go, apparently. Oh yeah, all along the bottom here. So that top, I did those two lines up 
along the center front seam of the yoke, but uh, along the bottom here I can just do one line straight across. And there's that, top stitched, perfect. And we'll do top stitching on either side of this yoke seam in the back, on each back piece as well. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit croaky today, or bad. I have been uh, working on writing a little bit, which means I've been reading it aloud as I'm editing, and that means my voice is a bit tired from reading aloud for hours at a time, because when I'm editing my books, usually I read them aloud to get a sense of the rhythm and stuff like that in the dialogue. So my voice gets quite tired doing that. All right, so sewing the front princess seams, I'm gonna start pinning our nice top stitch center panel to the side panels here of the princess seam. This isn't the best angle, but I will show you again when I do the other side. So I'm just matching up those notches that I was careful to cut in and remind myself and you about in the last video. Um, so I pin the notches first, pin down to the waist, and then pin up to the shoulder like I'm doing here. And then I will handle the area over the bust last. I am going to put a couple of clips in the straight side, the center piece of this, so that it fits the curved side princess piece a little bit better. I'm just going to put a, a couple of clips in this so that it lays nicely. Of course, the seam will be clipped after it's sewn anyway, so it's no trouble putting them in now. So it makes it nice and smooth while I'm trying to sew this area. Stick my hand inside, just smooth this whole area out. Make sure everything is going to be a nice curved seam. Of course, we're sewing something quite straight to something quite curved. Um, and, you know, fabric doesn't want to do that naturally, so you kind of have to convince it. So I'm going to be using a lot of pins here, and I will be sewing over all these pins for sure, just taking my time um, and being careful not to hit a pin with my needle, which I have done before, of course, being my lazy sewing over pins self. But I just think it's nice to be holding that seam smooth. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing that princess seam, this first side of the princess seam, I suppose. And I'll be good and take my pins out for a little while, and then you'll see over the bust, I stop caring because I'd rather have the extra help of the pins, the assistance from them. For this, I am going to put my hand in between the two pieces just to help guide everything and coax everything through the machine without getting any like extra accidental gathers or puckering going on. Of course, I don't want any of that. I want a nice smooth seam over the bust. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything is laying nicely inside like this. Taking my time where I need to, just to make sure that this Seam stays nice and smooth. Ugh. Seam stays. Ugh. Can't talk anymore. And then down from the bust to the waist. Perfect. All right. And of course, I'm going to show you all that again here on the other side, but with a better camera angle. So I have this side piece again, and then the front pin together at the markings, the notches. They're not actually notched, but you get the idea. And then up from the shoulder down to that point as well. And then I will do the bust last again. I will put clips in there again, just so it lays nice and smooth. There we go. Kind of coax it with my fingernails up, kind of. And then pin all that into place once again, and then sew it with care once again. back on the ironing table here. I'm of course going to clip that seam. Always clip your curves. Of course, for some reason I decided to just put slices in here and really I needed to be taking triangles out. So later I think you'll see me come back in here and cut little triangles out of this area over this curve. I don't know what I was thinking, just slicing it. Trying to cut a corner that of course I shouldn't have been trying to cut, honestly. But here I am using my tailor's ham again to press that seam open, the princess seam open. Um, especially because I will be eventually doing some top stitching over this area. I want it to lay quite nice and flat. You can get these tailor's hams at most sewing places or fabric shops. Joanne certainly. And definitely online, of course. They are useful to have. I wish I had like some additional pressing tools, so 
I really need to upgrade my pressing tools in general, including my iron, because people sometimes ask me what iron I recommend, and I'm like, not this one, because this is like a $12 iron from Target, and not really up to the task. But here's my front bodice piece, and I'm going to grab my back bodice pieces now. For some reason, I decided to put these on before I sewed the additional front panel on. I don't know why I decided to do this. Uh, it's not, it doesn't make it hyper inconvenient to the next but part, but I definitely could have waited and done the front extra panel first, but whatever. I'm pinning the side seams here and then also the shoulder seams for my bodice, front and back together, right sides together, of course. So there's that, next to the machine. And I will grab these pieces to turn them all right side out. So I'm gonna take the black and white additional front panel piece here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip my corners so that I can turn this right side out. There we go. I'm gonna clip the curve along the top here too, because even though it's subtle, it is still a curve up here, and I want it to lay as smooth and nicely curved as possible. All right, so then I will take this knitting needle that I have nearby now for the purpose, shake this guy out, and then poke the corners so that they're nice and crisp. And then I'm going to try and press this so that it's kind of, the white is rolled underneath the black so that the white won't show when it's turned over. Um, I really want to be careful while pressing this. I could have sewn, I could have cut the white a little bit smaller than the black and that would have helped in this as well. Or like I, um, I, forget, I feel like I forgot to mention earlier, I could have sewn this with the white facing down on the machine, like uh, sewn it from the other side. And because that's where the feed dogs are, there's a little, part of your machine that like grips the fabric and pulls it through the machine that actually will kind of gather it a tiny 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 bit and so if you put the bigger the piece that you want to end up smaller facing those hopefully this makes some sense it is usually helpful basically i should have sewn this with the white facing the machine and the black facing up but i did it the other way around in the end it doesn't really matter down here i'm just pressing this open area flat and smooth this is going to be getting some top stitching so i didn't bother to slip stitch it shut actually um, but of course this is the part that gets folded down for the white collar to show here. So that's why I'm making this additional panel. And I'm really just stretching the black out so that it covers all the white at the edges here. Nice and crisply pressed though. All right, and now we have the mandarin collars, of course. So I'm gonna take my pins out of those and then I will go ahead and clip my corners and curves on these pieces too. I'll zoom you in for that. Here we are, just gonna cut notches out of my corners here so that they will lay nice and smooth and then cut my along the curve. It's again, a subtle curve here, but always clip your curves, guys. All right, and same with the other one. And then I will turn these right side out. Like so, boop. Poke my corners of the back of the collar here and the front more slightly curved collar or corner as well. Collar, corner, you know what I mean. Corner of the collar, collar of the corner. You get it. Just give this a nice press a little bit of steam going on same with the other one flip like so oh the heater turned off again bummer i'm freezing down here <laughs> i'm just go ahead and sew those side seams and shoulder seams that i pinned a minute ago just going along this side seam here and then all the other little bits i pinned a minute ago I'm gonna go ahead and press open those seams as well, these side seams here, and then the shoulder seams, seams, shoulder seams as well. Struggling today to talk. I'm actually kind of exhausted today. I don't even really know why I'm so tired today. Clearly, I need to rest a little bit more. Which is just foreign to me, you know? Rest? What is that? No idea. All right, clip some stray threads here. So here's our front bodice piece, and here's our extra little panel with the white on the other side. So what I'm gonna do here is sew this via, via top stitching it 
onto the panel that is sewn into the dress. So it's the same pattern piece, we'll remember. So I just need to pin it a half inch up from the waist here because of course the skirt is gonna be sewn on there. So I'm just gonna pin this, lining it exactly on top of the seam, of the princess seam underneath, because this piece is the same, um, but it's just, you know, gonna be top stitched on to the bodice here. And then the top of this seam that I'm pinning now, I will leave about, I think it's about three inches open so that I can turn back that top to create our little white turn back collar, of course. And the nice thing about having this white underlayer all the way like this is that when you turn to the side, or when I turn to the side while wearing this, you can kind of see the white underneath there. It's like a flash of a little colored line along the princess seam, and it looks quite nice, I think. But I'm just taking care to make sure this is lined up properly and just pinning this all along the princess seam here. taking care over the bust of course I could have actually taken a little bit more care um, because I did have that princess seam quite smooth but then I perhaps could have been a little bit more careful when putting this panel on here it was about three inches down you can of course have as much or as little fold over for this kind of thing as you'd like or none at all you know all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and take that to the machine and so that again I did put a line of top stitching down here I forgot to kind of mention that step um, I just did some top stitching on this panel along the bottom so that there's already a line of stitching there that I can connect with and then go up along this seam so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that into my machine there we go find where I left off for my top stitching on the panel and now I'm gonna top stitch through the panel into the dress to hold it on um, but it will just look like top stitching but it's also practically holding a this piece onto the front as well. Again, just putting my hand underneath where I need to guide anything, keeping everything steady and smooth as it goes through the machine. I do think this dress would be quite fun in other colors or materials fabrics as well. It could be cool to do this in like white with red underneath forget if I mentioned that in the last video or not, but just what this step makes me think of, of all the different options for different colors of turnbacks and things. All right, and once I reach that pink pin is like the end of where I want this seam to be, so I'm just gonna do a little back stitching there and then remove from the machine. There we go. Just making sure everything's okay on the inside here. All right, removing my pins that I did sew over again. <laughs> this is where our turn back is gonna be, but on the other side, I can sew this down again, like I just did, but I'm gonna sew all the way up on this side. So I'm gonna be pinning it again along that princess seam on this side, making sure everything's smooth and lining up the way it should be. But I'm just gonna pin that up along the princess seam again, except for I'm gonna go all the way to the top this time, making sure my little corner matches at the top there. And then I'm gonna go halfway across the top of the yoke as well this time, because I only want that one corner on the other side to be free to flip down. All right, just going up the princess seam here. I am wearing a Star Wars t-shirt here as well. And no makeup, but what are you gonna do, you know? Making sure everything's lined up, taking my time to make sure that that white isn't gonna show too much from the front at least. All right, so now along this front bit, that's what I'm saying, I'm just gonna pin up into the center of the yoke as well. So from about, making sure that that's all lined up, from about here in the center back as well, I'm gonna top stitch this whole area so that only that one corner is free to be turned back. Back of the machine. I'm gonna start in the center here. Again, just do a little bit of back stitching, but lining it up just where I want it. All right. Taking a lot of care here because, of course, this is like the center front of the garment, and I want it well to line up and look nice. 
again going to be leaving the needle down in the project, picking up my presser foot, turning the project, and putting the presser foot back down to get that nice clean corner there, and then going to sew down the princess seam just like I had done on the other side. Playing with the pins as I do that just to make sure everything stays smooth as I work it through the machine here. There we go. Again, lining it up with that top stitching along the bottom there. All right, and then I can press my little corner down. Ta-da! Here's our little Luke Skywalker detailing for this one. But that's essentially how I achieved the look of that Return of the Jedi jacket in this dress, or for this dress. Using the tailor's ham to try and get these thick princess seams as smooth as possible. Here I am finally going in here and cutting out those triangles over the bust that I should have done earlier. Don't know why I was thinking I could skip this, but I had to come in and do it so everything would lay as nice as I could get it. Honestly. Still trying to get my corner of that collar to lay just as I'd like. Using the tailor's ham again and a little steam to get this bust area as smooth as possible. So now I need to put my collar on, so I'm going to grab one of my mandarin collars here. Again, I'm just going to line up that half inch that I had, you know, set aside as free to use as the seam allowance on this. So folding that back, I'm only going to be sewing one layer of the collar on to the neck edge at this point. So I'm just going along here and pinning one side of the collar in here, all along the neck edge like that. This is where that bias comes in handy too because of course the neck collar edge of the bodice is more curved than the collar is. So it's good that there's a little bit more movement in that. I'm just going to come over here back to the machine, sew that on there. Again just moving things along where I need them to be to keep everything smooth as I go, stopping and starting as needed. Once I reach the front, I'm just kind of playing with the pins to make sure everything stays lined up where I need it to be, and a little bit of backstitching to finish. Come in here, I'm going to go ahead and clip out from that curve again, of course, because that neckline is quite curved in here, and I want the collar to lay as smooth as possible. Especially you don't want any extra bulk up near your neck, of course, if you don't have to have any. All right, this is how I end up with confetti all over my sewing room. So from the outside, we're looking quite smooth here, nice. But we have to, of course, handle the inside, which is why we have, you know, that additional layer here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning the seam allowance up and then pinning it into place here so that everything's nice and smooth on the inside. This is where I realized I needed to unpick this yoke just a tiny bit so that I could get it to lay exactly like I wanted to. Of course, this area is top stitched still as well, so no worries. I will zoom you in a tiny bit in a minute so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so that gets folded down. So I need to just unpick a couple of stitches here on that yoke. So I have a little bit of area to work with. Of course, this is quite a thin little yoke up here right in the center front of the neck. But of course, this is also a very uh, crucial area that you don't want to have look messy right in the center of the front of the neck where the collar ends. All right, so I'm just going to tuck all that extra seam allowance stuff up into the pocket of this collar. So it gets tucked up in there and then this gets folded down and then it's nice and smooth and all finished and tucked inside up here, which is what we want. I'm using some finer glass headed pins to pin this area. And then I'm just going to go along the collar and just fold the seam allowance in so that it's nice and smooth and encompasses all that seam allowance up into the collar. And because this is cut on the bias and again has a little bit of stretch in it, I don't have to worry about clipping this side of this. It should be fine. So, and it, it indeed, it was fine. Just pinning that along, folding that seam allowance all up and inside so that everything is nice and smooth. Back here, I do need to make another little slice in the neck edge as well, just so I can tuck everything up inside. 
And of course, this very back edge of the bodice here will be used to put a zipper in, so I do need that little hanging over a bit, but I just want everything to be smooth up and around here. And I will just go ahead and hand stitch this area down everywhere I have pinned here. Just, I kind of slip stitched it down inside invisibly. So the outside will look nice and smooth like this, and the inside will be all encompassed like so. So I'm just over here hand stitching that collar down before I do anything else. And then I did the other side of the collar the exact same way, but did not bother to film it, of course. I am gonna, of course, hem my sleeves here, but because they were a little bit on the shorter side, I decided to hem them with bias tape just to keep as much length as I possibly could. So I just have a couple of lengths of double fold bias tape that's ironed flat that I will go ahead and use to hem these sleeves. I do have a video on hemming with bias tape, so I will put a card up to that here as well, just because this is a technique I use all the time, hemming either sleeves or entire dresses, skirts with bias tape like this. So that's just how I finished off these sleeves as well. I did actually put a line of gathering stitches into the top of my sleeve caps here as well, just because it's good to gather, even when you don't have a gathered sleeve, um, it's just a regular set in sleeve, a smooth set in sleeve. You do want to gather the sleeve caps just a little bit, just to help them give them a tiny bit of a curve up here. It just really helps with setting them in properly. You should have a little bit of extra, tiny bit of ease in your pattern, hypothetically, um, just so that this stays nice and smooth and curved up in the shoulder where that gets sewn onto the bodice. So I'm just pulling those gathering stitches a little tiny bit, not to create gathers really, but just to create a little bit of a cup or edge to this sleeve up here, like so. And then I can, of course, sew my sleeves into my bodice. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin the sleeve into the arm hole here, matching those seams at the underside and then pinning everything in place. Then I can go ahead and sew along here. And then I just have that slipped on over my machine and I'm just gonna sew that sleeve into the arm of the bodice here. And then I will do the same, of course, for the other sleeve, the other side. Again, sewing over my pins, so you know, that's me for you. I should be wearing safety goggles or something, so I don't get a flying needle in my face one of these days, but it doesn't happen too often. Me and my machine have an agreement that it just doesn't hit pins, you know? So there's my sleeve set into my bodice now. And now of course I can sew the skirt onto the bodice at the waist. So I will lay that out, right sides together, put the skirt on to the bodice and line that up. I'm gonna line up the side seams and pin those because that's the most important there. And then I will line up everything else and just pin the waist of the bodice and the skirt together here. Go ahead and sew that together. Getting close now to finishing. Go ahead and sew all along this waist seam. Okay, and now I'm going to sew the center back of my dress shut, um, which seems silly because we're gonna be putting a zipper in, but that's just how I do my zippers. I like to sew the whole seam shut. Um, the area where the zipper will go will just be basted with large stitches. And then of course, below that to the top of where I'll have a little slit in the back of the skirt, I will sew with a regular stitch length. But um, you see me putting some extra pins here at the end of where the zipper will fall. And that's just because above that to the neckline, I will sew with a large stitch length. I'm just putting this basting stitching in so that I can iron it flat and smooth. Um, but below that area, I do have it sewn with a smaller regular stitch length um, because I won't be removing that whole line of stitching, of course, because on the skirt, I need it. I'm just gonna press that whole seam open, including making sure this back slit area is lined up properly. And I'll just put some pins in here to hold that for now. I will, I'll go ahead and tack this area down when I go to hem the skirt later, but just put some pins there to hold that for now. 
then I'll slide this up so I can iron the top bodice area. Just ironing this whole seam open here in the waist seam a little bit again too. And then I will go ahead and take the basting stitches out for where the zipper will go. I have, I believe, shown how I do my zippers in some of my other dress videos here on the channel. Um, in fact, I cut into a, I'll cut away here in a minute uh, to a clip because I forgot to film something from a different video of mine where I explain how I do my zippers. But here I am just unpicking the basting that I put in from where the zipper ends up to the neck because because I just had that stitching in there so that I could press the seam open like this and get a nice crisp edge. And so I'm just gonna remove the basting here and then turn everything right side out. And so now I have this nice finished edge to set my zipper into. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line my zipper up on this side here, this left hand, or yeah, no, right, this right hand side of the zipper. I know left from right, I promise. Um, I'm of course sewing this as close to the teeth as I can. So I'm just pinning that along and then I come in here and just use my regular presser foot. I just sew that down quite close to the edge of the teeth here. And that's how I do the first side of my zipper, just removing those pins as I go. And then I come back in here and I lap the zipper over or lap the other side of the dress over that zipper teeth, um, basically. And I will have me from the past take over for a minute here and explain this a little bit. There's a piece of extra thread here. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a pin through here and pin it all along here so that it's just overlapping that area. And then I will go ahead and sew along the zipper teeth on this side, just with that same presser foot, um, getting the needle as close as I can to here, of course, again, I could get closer if I used that zipper foot instead of my regular one, but I don't care. So I'm just gonna use the regular seam, um, regular presser foot and just sew all along the other side so that this becomes a little lapped zipper and then our zipper will be in. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. All right, so here I am just sewing a hook and eye onto the top of the neck as well, now that the zipper is in. I do, um, I did put a couple of, you know, hand stitching little tacks in here too to hold the zipper tape down and things like that. But I'm just putting a little hook and eye up here at the neckline. I actually need to move the eye of this over a little bit more because it um, is not as tight as it needed to be. But, you know, that's a small adjustment that can be made at any time. And then actually the last step of this whole dress is to hem it and I actually just turned uh, the hem up about an inch and hand, hemmed it by hand here. So that's all I did for this. It is surged there as well, but I didn't turn it twice. I just turned it up once just because I wanted, I didn't want to have too bulky of a hem on this. I did turn the corner all mitered and nice as you can see here. And then I hand stitched that down um, back here at the back slit area uh, of the back of the skirt. But then I just kind of did long and short stitches to hem the length of the skirt here. And then it was all finished. Just stitch the hem by hand here. course is the finished dress on set again with all the fun backdrops going on and you know listening to the Star Wars soundtrack in the background unfortunately I can't put that here in the video of course but that's what I was listening to when I was filming this doing a little dance to the cantina music in one of the outfits but of course I just sadly for you can't put that in happily for me because I cannot dance you guys but again I am really happy with how this dress came out it came out like just how I had envisioned it would which always makes me happy of course um and also I just really love the feeling of wearing it it feels very commanding and uh like very chic and nice so I really like the way it feels on so I should make another dress in this same pattern I'm just not sure what colors or uh, fabrics I would like to do that in something like in wool I think would be nice also other like versions of this where you have like either black with the red on the inside or like a white version with red on the inside for like the sith version of this dress I think would be very fun um, although I, I do tend to lean, lean on the the light side of the force personally um, as we noted in the script for that video anytime anything was empire ish I always made it into a spy of course because I don't I don't like the idea of working for the empire I'm 
I'm all about freedom and all that jazz. But hopefully you guys still enjoyed this long version of the sewing and project process, even though I split it up into these two different videos. Let me know how you feel about this format in the comments below. I'm hoping, you know, to please the algorithm somehow, um, but also you as well. So let me know if it was really annoying to have it this way, because if so, I can always do this still as a very one very long video if that really works better. So let me know in the comments below how you felt about that. And of course, as always, thank you for tuning in today, and I will see you again here on the channel soon. Bye.